exactly. of, the, so, of the screen. Exactly. And that's why I'm looking at the, the chocolate, is that it? So, like exactly. So, yeah. so it shows 56%. That's the plan. They have a big plan to, to spend on infra, you know, to accelerate the growth of the economy. The second to take a look at is that, uh, is that table the that shows that the top three sectors that the government dedicated or plans to dedicate money to, you know, for, for, for rebuilding infrastructure is the works, power, and housing, and then the second one is transportation. the transportation, and then mm. the third one is, is national, national planning. Mm. So, so the Ministry of Transportation, so, but if you take a look at it, you find the capex for works, power and housing being 529 billion era. That was the plan for 2017. Mm. But there's a bit of a downside. The government is not making as much money to ensure that that is you know, spent on infrastructure in this country. So, so there's a revenue problem here? There's a revenue problem. If you take a look at it, for the first half of 2017, the government generated one trillion naira. Meanwhile, they were meant to generate about 2.5 trillion naira. So that speaks to about 60% shortfall in what they are meant to generate. In 2017? In 2017. Already? Already, in the first half. And that speaks also to what they spent in the first half as expenditure is 66% below the full year run rate. So there is really no way or they are sort of constrained in terms of spending on infra to boost economic growth. So this is where the issue of this kind of a trust fund for road construction makes a lot of sense to okay. involve so, private so, so, sectors. If we bring that to your page, that page you, you, you focus it from Chapel Hill. The Ministry of Works and, 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 and Housing, if you look at the recurrent expenditure versus the CAPEX and what the total allocation really is, we're looking at 564 billion, budget and national planning, 1.328, Ministry of Transportation, 277, Ministry of Defense, Agriculture and others. So we're looking at the bottom there, the total, uh, in terms of the total budget, 7.4, that's the total 2017 uh, uh, budget. That's very good. But if we go back to uh, the first page in terms of who will participate in the Road Trust Fund, and I'm sure you folks uh, at Chapel Hill uh, will be uh, uh, digesting this, would have finished digesting this project because uh, I'm sure you folks uh, can see money here. So there's money to be made here, you know, for private sector, uh, you know, companies that can open their eyes into these opportunities. So the first thing is, if you take a look at, there's a room for financial intermediaries to come into play here. That's where I'm going. So you the financial intermediaries, uh, like Chapel Hill. Yes. So what would you be doing, for example, uh, in support of this road trust fund of the Buhari's administration? So it will be a seamless one for us, because as we speak, we have, like I said earlier, we have a Nigerian debt infrastructure fund. Which Lagos State was a flag of point. So, so with Lagos State you know, being, being, being the flag of point, and then we, we identify some projects that are um, you know, related to infrastructure in, in Nigeria. So the, the first you know, amount we raised was about $5 billion. Era. And then we are going to the market again to raise additional in about 15 to $20 billion. Era. So that is ongoing as we speak. And with this government sort of uh, you know, program, or let me say trust fund, there is room for us to take a look at key road projects that we can identify and then we speak to the government, we get the companies involved, so we bring the government with the companies and then we identify the roads and the companies in question pay for the roads and then it's executed. So we'll make it, so we'll make it very practical. Uh, uh, Denham, uh, Chapel Hill Denham with Channels Television and decide perhaps we want to do uh, uh, the roads just in front of the office or anyone here where, where we are located and we said okay how, how will it work out how will China television uh, uh, benefit uh, what will be the tax that uh, benefit or credit that China's television will get and how does the government get value for money and at the end of the day back to your first comment that the government's tax revenue it's not short changed with this tax holiday, tax credit arrangement. Okay, so the way to look at it is as follows. If you put in, if you put in place, like the example you just mentioned, the, you know, uh, uh, China's television road being fixed, if that is done, what China's would benefit from that is a one year holiday, or let's say, you know, a, 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 a three year holiday, depending on, you know, the amount spent to reconstruct that road. Uh, so that will be apportioned over a three-year period. So if we spend $100 million, yes, uh, to repair the road, mm -hmm. we're going to get a tax holiday for three years? For three years, you will get a tax holiday. And Breakly, also, $100 million. Yes, into, into three, 
let's say 33, 33, 34 million. Mm -hmm. So for those three year period, there'll be a tax holiday, you know, because you, you funded the reconstruction of that road. That's one. Two is, assuming the road we are talking about is in, in an area that is economically disadvantaged, then you can recover the costs within one year. So there's a lot, there's more incentive for companies if they go to areas that are, largely speaking, economically disadvantaged. Uh, what do we mean economically disadvantaged? In, in a few seconds, what does it really mean? Okay, so we're talking like, like speaking about the rural areas in this case. So where you seek to facilitate the transportation of goods and services from villages, from farms where they produce goods and services or crops or food, transport them into the city seamlessly. So th those are economically disadvantaged areas. But so if you come into the urban area, it will be a different discussion entirely because you'll be looking at about a three-year period so that is where the difference is. So, so if, if we go to the food belts, like maybe Benue State Correct. or Anambra State, for example, we can recover 100% within a year. Within one year. But if we do the one inside one very luxury estate, so like is, Banana Island. It will be over a three-year period. Be over three. That, that's where the scheme is. Or oh, that's where the cash is. That's where the cash is. And that's oh, where the scheme I got it. And there's also an upside for, for companies that participate. There's a 10% cost of fund recovery as well. Because to part away with your cash as a corporate, you are locking that cash down for a period of time. And that is something mm. that we call the time value of money. So, so the government, government seeks to compensate them with about 10%, 10 you know, to, for on the to, cost on of... On top of getting my money back exactly. as a company. Exactly. That, that looks like good business, uh, doing business with the government. Uh, I, think, uh, I think I'm going to... I love this. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we've got to, to raise the cotton, as it were, understanding what this tax, tax credit is all about. Uh, and if you guys are making money on this, let us be the first to know. You will know. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Dean Ibrahim, who is the head of research at... Um, Chapel Hill, Denham. Let's come back after the break. You've heard about the Road Trust Fund. We have a lot more to talk about on the program. Don't go away. <laughs>